What's going on, money dudes and ladies? This is the Multitasker One Money Adventure. And it's that time again to do a death battle episode react. It's Doctor Strange versus Doctor Fate. It's that time again of Marvel versus DC once again. This is the battle between all magic and sorcery. Now it's determined who is the true supreme of sorcery, or more importantly, who is the true of the sorcerer supreme. So, this is going to be a tough call. So, uh, I finally got off work. Uh, it's just been a slow and steady, and it's pretty much it's just stale today. So, I, I'm just glad I just got off. I didn't get a chance to watch it. Watch it. So, this will be the perfect time for me to, to, to react to it. And I will have a shut up right now. Without further ado, let's begin now. <laughs> The art of magic is a perplexing thing. Only those with the right knowledge, talent, and willpower can truly claim to be the most powerful wizards of all. Like Doctor Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme of Marvel Comics. And Doctor Fate, DC's Defender of Cosmic Order. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Dr. Stephen Strange wasn't just any brilliant neurosurgeon, he was the very best. Too bad he was also a prick who cared more about the money he made than the patients he worked on. Sensation patients bring recognition. Recognition brings money, and money keeps Wellhaven stores open. Can't blame him, though. When your entire family kicks the bucket one by one like Stevens did, it's kind of hard to get attached to anybody else. Also, money's just great. Strange's talent at the operating table earned him celebrations worldwide. His work became more expensive, and his bank account rose into the millions. And then... Don't text and drive, kids. Exactly. Strange survived, but his hands got terrible nerve damage, making them useless for complex tasks like, oh, I don't know, surgery. Pretty inconvenient. To find a cure, Strange spent his entire fortune and traveled the globe until he found the Ancient One. He had heard of this man's befuddling mystic healing powers, and at this point, he was up for trying anything. But the old dude refused to cure him. Instead, he offered to teach Strange how to use magic himself and become a superhero. Who needs hands when you have magic? Through his training, Strange discovered many secrets of the universe, along with plenty of handy spells. He has learned so many charms, jinxes, enchantments, conjurations, hexes, and incantations that it would be impossible to list them all now, but he certainly has his favorites. Like the nearly unbreakable bands of Sidorak. Unless you're super strong like the Hulk or Thanos, no way you're snapping these chains. He can surround foes in everlasting fire with the That's flames of Faltine. Right. Launch energy shots called the Bolts of Balthac. You hear say Balthac? Knock out foes with the Whatever Mists of Morpheus. And shield himself using the Seven Rings of Ragador. Who the hell came up with these spell names? Whatever happened to plain old Abracadabra? Everybody loves no. that one. No. Other no. techniques of his include illusions, hypnotism, protective force fields, telekinesis, immortality, time manipulation, power stealing, teleportation, dimensional travel, transmutation, spell nullification. And he can turn himself into a ghost! No. Ooh. That's his astral form, a projection of Strange's soul separate from his body, which defies the laws of physics. Look, Wiz, he can go through walls and fly around. That's a ghost. To invoke these spells, Strange audibly calls upon the powers of the Vashanti, three godly beings of enormous power. Oh, that one's a kitty. I summon four the shielding powers of the Vashanti. Marvel, he really? Sure mysterious hocus pocus to shame. Anyway, after many years of study, Strange's mentor was slain by a creepy hentai monster, and Strange was granted the title of Sorcerer Supreme. 
which is like a normal sorcerer with all the toppings. As Sorcerer Supreme, Strange was deemed the most powerful magic user and defender of the world. To better perform his duties, he carries numerous magical artifacts which assist him in battle. The Cloak of Levitation lets him fly without magic and has a mind of its own. Like Aladdin's magic carpet, but way more stylish. The Wand of Watum amplifies his powers, and the Axe of Angarumus, whatever, cuts through mystical beings. Fun fact, Strange found that axe in my ex wife's old witch cave. I mean apartment. But most versatile of all is the Eye of Agamotto. With this amulet, Strange can perceive any truth, absorb massive amounts of energy, enhance his psychic powers, and fire a light that can weaken and obliterate magical entities. If you haven't noticed, Doctor Strange is super powerful. With all this magical mumbo-jumbo, he's taken on some of the biggest threats in the universe. Now, I've come to bar him. And if he ever gets stuck, he basically just rewrites the rules of reality, which is probably what happens when you divide by zero. That's not even possible. Exactly! It's magic whiz. Anything can happen. Strange's astral form has traveled across the planet in, quote, precious seconds, putting him at several million miles per hour. Even better, when Adam Warlock once used an infinity gem to banish Strange to the far reaches of the universe, Strange just cast a spell that zoomed him all the way back. So yeah, F you, Adam. Given what we see here, Doctor Strange was most likely sent to a void, or a large empty area between galaxies. The void where our galaxy resides is about 2 billion light years in diameter, with the Milky Way set relatively close to the center. Based on Strange's conversation here, we can assume a generously short time frame of 5 seconds. So, Strange must have moved over 4.2 septillion miles per hour. That's 6 quadrillion times the speed of light. Damn! Oh, how about that time he ripped the soul out of his arch nemesis and sent him back in time? Or when he restored his cloak of levitation from mere scraps? Or when he beat up Galactus and totally scrambled his brain? With his immense magical prowess, Strange has survived blasts from Voltor, a robot with the power to move stars, and even withstood a supernova. At minimum, an exploding star outputs over 350 septillion gigatons of TNT. That's six octillion times greater than the Sar Bomba, the most powerful nuclear weapon ever made. Not impressed yet? Well, Strange can manipulate and detonate stars himself. That's right, this guy uses supernovas as weapons. Strange is exceptionally clever, and while his physique is not superhuman, it's worth noting that he is a talented athlete and martial artist. This is important, as the use of magic can wear down the magician's body if it is unfit. His immortality has also proved incredibly useful. I'll say, he's looking pretty good for a guy born in the 1930s. More than that, at one point, Strange was recruited by the Vashanti to fight in a magical war, which lasted 5,000 years. 5,000 years. Holy shit! I hope he got shit some really right. good Look veterans benefits Look after that. But for real, this so guy has the power to protect the universe like and reshape it however he wants. I know which doctor I'm calling the Harry next time Potter, I'm man, sick. so hairy. I mean, well, not oh, really hairy. He just got long hair. Doctor Strange. Long curly hair. Sorcerer Supreme. Tell me, Boomstick, do you believe in fate? I only believe in one thing, Wiz. 18-year, 100-proof whiskey. Oh, well, after accompanying his father on an archaeological expedition in Mesopotamia, 12-year-old Kent Nelson certainly did. Instead of digging up boring old artifacts like tools or pottery, Kent uncovered a 10-billion-year-old god. Too bad waking him up also gassed Kent's dad to death. This slumbering god was Nabu, a lord of order born from the very beginning of the universe. While Nabu normally cares little about the universally inconsequential concerns of individual humans, this time was different. Nabu took the newly orphaned Kent under his wing and taught him the ways of magic. Oh, sweet! I'd take a goddad over an ordinary one any day. But really, I'd just take any dad. Though Nabu wasn't too keen on the actual parenting part of the deal. So he just magic Kent into a full-grown adult over the course of a week. Does that mean oh, he got great. hit with all those years of awkward puberty all at once? 
My God, talk about a mood swing. To master the mystic arts, Nabu granted Kent three ancient relics. First and foremost, Kent donned the golden helmet of fate. While Kent woke up the physical body, Nabu's soul is actually inside this helmet. So when Kent put it on, his spirit merged with Nabu's and they became Dr. Fate. I am an agent of order. Wait, he's 12. Technically, he can't be a doctor yet, right? Well, in time, he became a trained physician and achieved a PhD in archaeology. Good for him. Anyway, he's also got the Cloak of Destiny, which gave him flight, super strength, and superhuman durability. Lastly, he received the Amulet of Anubis, a talisman which increases fate's powers, counters opposing magic, and can launch an intense beam of magical firepower. It also houses its own pocket dimension, where the souls of past Dr. Fates reside. Oh yeah, lots of people have worn that shiny helmet, and not all of them were doctors. Even Kent's wife, Inza, got in on the magic action. But Kent is, like, the main one, so we're sticking with him. As Dr. Fate, Kent became the immortal champion of the supernatural lords of order in their fight against the vile lords of chaos. And he learned tons of wacky wizard skills he can use with just a thought, perfect for putting chaos gods in their place. Fate can use telekinesis, cast illusions, erect force fields, hypnotize foes, read minds, teleport fast distances, create an astral projection of himself, travel through time and dimensions, and even manipulate matter at a molecular level. Let's face it, Wiz. He's so powerful, he can basically do whatever the hell he wants. Like that time he did a Freaky Friday body swap with Barely Blue Beetle more. like it was nothing. He can even conjure up Superman's Kryptonian powers for himself. That's right. This guy can just decide to be Superman for a day. With his mighty <laughs> magic, fate has turned buildings into dust, thrown a planet into a sun, and physically held back the destruction of the universe. The helmet just the helmet once flew through space so fast it reached the velocity of God and then bounced off the edge of the universe. What wow. the hell does that even mean? Fate has regenerated his body from a single thought, withstood hits from the likes of Superman and Ultraman, and somehow survived in a dimension of reality where literally nothing exists. Who the hell is writing this crap? Also, when DC decided to reboot their entire right. comic line, Fate was one of the only characters to survive the crisis that literally collapsed the multiverse. But he does have one big weakness. The helmet is Nabu, and Nabu is the source of Fate's powers. So if you remove the helmet, he loses his magic. For the most part, Kent does possess some magical ability of his own, like telekinesis and super strength, but he's not even remotely close to the potential of Dr. Fate. And even further from the true fate. When the souls of a man, a woman, and a god come together, in this case Kent, Inza, and Nabu, they create Dr. Fate's ultimate state of being. An entity with enough power to rip the universe apart and effortlessly overpower other lords of order and chaos. Sadly, like all menage a trois scenarios, keeping this going for too long could destroy all three of them. So fate doesn't go final form unless he absolutely has to. Still, the people of the cosmos can sleep easy knowing fate is on their side. Your fate is utterly binding. Who are you? Oh. Well, let me show you. Okay, that's what it's called, though. Okay, never mind, don't. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, I'll teach you how to be a wizard in the kitchen. Looks like we got ourselves a really tough situation here. So, of course, Strange is a, a cloak of levitation, of course. The Eye of Agamotto. Sometimes he can use the the, 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 the wom of... Oh, man, talk about tongue-tied shit. The, the Tomb of Watum whatever but more importantly he can also can do an astral form pretty much anytime if he even needs to at the same time he could perform spells while in that form but however dr fate does possess the the helmet of fate the amulet the orb of namu and the cloth of destiny so 
pretty much you can pretty much do do everything. So this is gonna be, uh, yeah, as, this is gonna be a tough call. So I would say that Doctor Strange would would come out of this alive, but I don't know. I mean, then again, of course that that fate would would use his last resort especially with the uh the, the true fate so i i hopefully that that you know it won't come to that over i see if he stays too long in that process that it was a short all three in, in in that one form so uh shit all right well let's begin let's 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 commence the fight It has come to my attention that there are two Sorcerer Supremes in this existence. I am here to resolve this embarrassment. I see somebody needs a lesson in manners. Let's get it. Let's go. Let's go. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, oh, his body is completely gray. 
It's over. KO! So, uh, don't doctors take an oath to never take a life or whatever? Analyzing this matchup was bizarre. You might even say it was strange? Save the puns, Wiz. That's my job. But yeah, both these doctor wizards were so stupidly powerful, trying to find their limit was like looking for a needle in a haystack. But nobody remembered to put the needle there in the first place. With their maximum potential seemingly unmeasurable, it's easy to make an argument for either one to win. If given the chance, Strange could have certainly, say, stolen Fate's powers, or maybe even just willed him out of existence. I bet plenty of Strange fans are letting us know how in the comments below. And that's fine, but Death Battle looks at the larger picture to find the most likely outcome of them all, oh, really? and Fate simply held the advantage on a grander scale. Strange may have fought a 5,000 year war, but Nabu's been around since the beginning of the universe. Over oh. 10 billion years. He Ten definitely had yeah. way more experience. Fate also had oh. the advantage of casting the majority of his spells non-verbally, while many of Strange's required specific hand movements and incantations. Still, it was only a matter of time until the Eye of Agamotto informed Strange of Fate's one weakness. Depowering him wasn't as easy as you'd think. He had his own magic, and his superhuman strength was oh, something Strange yes, didn't no have at all. Basically, anything Strange could do, Fate could do, too. But even more. Remember how Strange cast a spell which moved him six quadrillion times the speed of light? Yep. Now, remember how Fate's helmet flew from Earth to the edge of the universe and back? It took yeah, about one that. year to make this trip. Given the estimated of scope of the observable trip. and unknown universe, a trip of this magnitude would require the helm to fly nearly 28 decillion times the speed of light. That's over four quintillion times faster than Strange. Look at it this way. Strange was a man borrowing the powers of a god, while Fate's a god borrowing a man. Plus, that power boost with ends of soul from the amulet put Fate on a level above the gods in his universe, something Strange can't really do himself. Both Doctor Strange and Doctor Fate possessed incomprehensibly impressive magic, but Fate held more experience, greater physical abilities, and a wider range of talents. Which left Steven stuck with a strange twist of fate. The winner is Dr. Fate. Damn it. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want exclusive commentary on this episode, click that box right over there. And if you want the battle music for yourself, there's a download link in the description. See you next time. Alright, anyway, who's next? You. Jack Asama. Oh, shit. Now that's going to be an interesting fight. Oh my goodness. For those who actually have Street Fighter Crosses Tekken, looks like we're about to have ourselves a little dream match, which is Ryu versus Jin. That's going to be coming out next month of July. Oh, oh, this is going to be interesting. I, I Hopefully that they, they can get more, uh, more information on Ryu because... There, uh, there may be something in that 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 uh, that death battle kind of missed out on. Anyways, um, oh, damn, I hate to say it, but Doctor Fate got the ace in the hole, which is the that that true form, the yeah, the the true fate form, with the combine of 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 Kent, his wife, Nabu. It it makes sense because. Combine those two, those three together that, that brings the the almighty power, and even as strange as astral form that that could be at some use of a, of the advantage, but it proves that that fate's ultimate form is just basically it's just way ten times better, ten times powerful than he, that he could ever do. So, ugh. I guess the, I would. I guess I lost on that part. So you know, I hate to admit to say, but you know, to Doctor Fate, hats to you. So lucky, lucky break for the, for DC, but it's what it is. So that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Smash those likes, and if you're new to this channel, click that bell, and you're officially a member of the Mighty Squad Nation. What I do to react to the episodes, gameplay trailers, movie trailers, and anime. 
and also smash those likes if you enjoyed it or you have some different opinions about the of this fight. I'm Mighty Adventure signing out. Peace and take care.